created live on Fireside. Welcome, I'm Lori Lee Binstock, and this is a Trauma Survivor Thrivers Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me live on Fireside Chat, where you can be a part of the conversation as my virtual audience. I am your host, Lori Lee Binstock. Everyone has an opportunity to ask me questions to our guest, to me, by requesting to hop on stage or sending a message in the chat box. Today's guest is Amanda Monnier. Amanda is an energy healer, certified energetic allergy healing practitioner, certified magnetic mind coach, certified yoga teacher, emotion code practitioner, certified transformational nutrition coach, and holds a bachelor's in psychology. She assists her clients in healing old wounds and up-leveling to their highest soul-aligned version of themselves. Amanda is a woman on a mission to create a movement of healed, intuitively connected humans, people who are truly aligned with their heart and soul, creating a life on their terms and passionately unleashing their gifts into the world. Amanda, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Laura Lee. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful and and excited to be here with you. Well, thank you. You know, you have so many titles, um, but your first title really struck me, Certified Energetic Allergy healing practitioner. Can you talk a little bit bit about that? Because, you know, I struggle with with allergies myself. Um, but actually, in the last couple of years, I haven't had any issues with allergies. And I'm, I'm wondering if this is this has everything to do with me healing my my old wounds and trauma. So I wanted you to kind of maybe explain that to me. Absolutely. And, and absolutely, it can. So kind of the underlying premise to healing an allergy is just bringing things into harmony. And so when we have like this charge, if you will, like for example, um, I'll give an example of someone in my family who's allergic to chicken and turkey. And there was all kinds of things that were going on in the home when she was growing up. And so the what can happen is if let's, you're at the family dinner table and something really a fight breaks out in the family or you see mom and dad like fighting and you're eating chicken or you're eating whatever whatever it is and then you end up your body creates this inflammatory response and it looks at it as like this foreign thing and and almost like this dangerous um, entity if you will because you have also this external stimulus going on. So it can be a variety of things, but the the fun thing about the energetic allergy healing modality is it's really like kind of cracking the code. So it could be a combination of things that really crack that code to release whatever is getting triggered. So, you know, for some people, they have like severe reactions or phobias, you can call them to certain um, animals or things. And usually there's like a deeper level and layers to what's going on. And so when we're doing like that deep inner work and we're releasing the emotions and we're releasing the identity structures, basically all the density, right? These things can definitely clear up on their own. So it sounds like maybe that's what happened for you as you were in your healing (laughs) process. And it really just neutralized it because what it is, is we're, ne- we're neutralizing the charge and we're bringing things, th- these things back into a state of harmony. And that is just the, the, really the premise I feel of just healing in general is just bringing, bringing back this energetic of harmony back into the picture. So there's a bunch of different things that can go into it, but in a very uh, short nutshell, that's kind of the, the foundations of this modality is really just it's like a combination lock, if you will. So getting all the little pieces that are causing the body to react in a certain way or the emotional response and really getting to that root cause and pulling it out at the root so we don't have it continue to repeat itself. That that kind of reminds me of a, a friend of mine who who would always eat shrimp, didn't have problems, but at her wedding, she ate shrimp and all of a sudden she just had this awful reaction. And I'm assuming because of the stress of a wedding and, you know, I n- never thought about it, you know, until you actually brought that up. Like if there's all these other outside 
um, factors, external factors that are triggering stress and all of that, that that was probably what it was all about. Because she's like, I've never been allergic to shrimp. So this was really, really weird. But I guess it's not that weird because the stress of actually hosting a wedding and getting married is probably really stressful. And uh, would you say that could have been easily it? Yeah. I mean, it, again, it could be so many, so many different factors. It could have been something unconscious that was triggered and then she's eating the shrimp and, and then having this reaction in her body. And, you know, for example, like people can be allergic to just even specific minerals. And so if the body or even amino acids, like there's even the whole section on the foundations before we would even necessarily go into like the bigger things, because if our body's allergic to certain amino acids and food, it's like those are the building blocks of life. And so really, it can be so multi layered. And so they could definitely have been the stress of it, or, or maybe it was even there was somebody there that was it was like a combination of the things in her body was having this reaction. So again, without like tuning into it, I wouldn't be able to say exactly what it was. But it, it definitely could be a variety of things from the stress to maybe a particular person that there was some unresolved stuff from. And then in conjunction with the food that was being eaten. And um, yeah, and then the body will obviously react in whatever way in that inflammatory response, because it's like trying to our body's always trying to get our attention. And that's the beautiful thing about the body is because our body always is going to tell us what's going on at a deeper level. And then it's like when we when we don't listen, then sometimes those little nudges become screams. And then we have, you know, we could call it dis-ease, different health ailments. And we lab- we love to label things as humans, <laughs> but mm-hmm. it's really just dis-ease in the body. And our body is just trying to get our attention so we can just simply neutralize it and release it and uh, bring that, that energetic state of harmony back in. And you talked about cracking the code in order to kind of heal that can we crack the code is like, I, 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 in my head, I'm thinking this is extremely intensive. So this is, yeah. So for this particular modality, um, that is kind of the, the foundation of the allergies is getting like the components of what actually caused it down to that root cause. Now, when I talk about healing in a general kind of a more general state because everything's like layered on top of one another. And there's so many things that can go into healing. And for me, I've been on my healing journey for about eight years now. And so as I continue to really understand a lot of this stuff, I I feel that actually a lot of it is rooted in identity. And so when we have these different identity structures running, and I'm talking about the identity structures that are that are not in alignment with our highest, with our soul, with our, the truth of who we are at that deeper level. And so when we can kind of break it down and not make it sound so, so daunting, because I mean, (laughs) it it can have, and and again, there's no one, there's no one size fits all to this healing either, because there are so many modalities out there. And there might be one thing that works for you that doesn't work for me. And so I don't, um, I don't, often like to generalize or make it black and white. And I always remind people that it's your journey and to take what resonates and leave the rest because some there's, again, there's so much out there in in the healing world, but going back to like this energy and this um, kind of notion of the identity structures is if we have these identity structures that even they can be passed down, we form them as we're growing up. I, they can go really deep. And so they can come out in these ways where let's say, for example, um, we could take either relationships or health. If we see health as something like, let's say that, that it wasn't safe to be in our body as a child and it wasn't safe to, um, it wasn't safe to have different um, relationships because of maybe what happened with mom or dad. And so we create this identity structure that it's first of all, not safe to be in the body or it's not safe to like love isn't safe or whatever the, the whatever it is. Cause we all have had something I'm sure in our life for me, it was, it was, I, I wasn't worthy and I wasn't, my light was too bright. And so I continue to play this out over and over again 
And that is a lot of what caused my health issues. So I had um, suffered from uh, skin issues for years and years up until I was about 30. So up until several years ago, and it was this identity structure that once I got to the bottom of it, it was that my light was too bright and I needed to hide. So my skin (laughs) followed those instructions that I was giving based on that identity and it created acne because the thing is, is that there's not one without the other when we're talking about health and even allergies and things, because when we have these low vibrational dense energies vibrating in our energy field, for example, the energies of guilt, shame, and unworthy all resonate with the frequencies of viruses, bacterias. And so they're like magnetic to one another Mm. because if we have this spectrum of frequency, the lower vibrational frequencies, we have like the guilt, the shame, the unworthy, the judgment, all the things kind of that don't feel so great. And then on the other side, we have these more expansive frequencies, love, um, harmony, joy, peace, all the things that feel really great. And I think we can all um, relate to having experiences at one point or another. And so when we have these dense energies in the body, that is actually what causes disease, these structures and identities, because it's like the thoughts, the emotions, and then we're create, and that's our point of attraction, our point of creation. Um, yeah, I, you know, you, you talked about your own healing dream, you actually were in law, law enforcement, law, law enforcement, and now you're an energy healer. Um, did you? Did your personal issues help you with that, make that pivot? What was, what was it that pushed you from law enforcement to being a healing, um, a healer? Yeah. So it was about, I had about a six year long career and law enforcement and it was a couple of years in it actually this awakening and consciousness, if you will, stemmed from a really painful breakup. And all this density came up to the surface. And I just knew that I had to figure out another way because I had tried everything. I had changed my diet. I had, it was, it was in conjunction with the acne. It was like the acne and then the relationships, but they were all tied together Mm -hmm. because it all came back to me. Right. So the awakening that I had really led me to, diving deep into what was causing it. And I, I was so determined to, to really figure out an alternative way because I, I even knew it since I was a little girl that I didn't feel life was supposed to be so painful. My parents had a divorce when I was six years old. And this is where a lot of like the abandonment stuff came from. And just really just moving about life in a very autopilot type of way. I was so disconnected from myself. And there was a point when I made this pivot um, from law enforcement to healing, where I just, I was like, I don't even know who I am. This was prior to really identifying that this is what I was, my soul wanted to do and what I was guided to do. But I hit this point to where I was just I just couldn't go on anymore. And I had learned so much of my journey as in law enforcement, but it was also, I was so in like my masculine energy and it was just another way that I had, I had kept myself safe all these years is stepping into like these more hard shell roles and um, just really in that kind of do, do, do rather than like, just being and Mm -hmm. taking action based on a place of alignment. And, you know, if anyone's there, zero judgment, because that is often kind of how the the structures of society have been set up to where it's like you jump into these kind of characters, if you will, and you pick a role that you want to play. And oftentimes it is, it, it, it can be about like these more external things rather than who we are as people like who you are as a soul what lights your soul on fire and so all this plays into the healing journey because when we're in this place of this disconnectedness and this non we're not expressing ourselves fully and we're doing we're moving about life with all the shoulds rather than what lights us up that plays into the healing that plays into because everything that's coming out of the body the all the things that we see 
that we label as disease are just symptoms of something deeper. Wow. Yeah. And you do talk, you did talk about our vibration. Um, and I want to talk about law of attraction because like you said, we, it, we're like, if we're vibrating low, if we're, if we're not healed, if we're dealing with so much, then that law of attraction that you're just attracting other low vibrating things, right? I don't know if that's how I say it, but um, I wanted to ask which areas of like manifestation and law of attraction do people frequently misunderstand? Because I do feel like people don't really think about how we actually, we vibrate at, at you know, different levels. Yeah. One thing that's been coming up for me lately that I felt excited to share a bit is that I do feel there are like different principles that we often hear in relation to manifestation, the law of attraction. Now, for me, I found it to be like kind of a three part process. But I also want to preface this with saying, I actually do feel that we each manifest differently. And the reason I say this is because as I kind of dove into my journey, I've worked with so many coaches along my healing process, healers. And I just found that the strategies and things that I'm told to implement, if I'm not doing it from a place of expansiveness and it doesn't mm -hmm. feel aligned for me, then oftentimes it just makes me more depleted and more tired. And so I just yes. want to preface this because I feel that in the spiritual community, there's often this very, again, this black and white where it's like, this is the way to X, Y, and Z. This is the way to perfect health. This is the way to 10,000 followers. This is the way to, you know, a six, seven, eight figure business. I, I personally have found that for me and, and maybe for others, like, can we normalize each of us having our own journey? And so I have found what works for me. So again, I want to preface this by saying that it may not be what, what works for you because I do feel we all each have a different we have a unique soul frequency, a unique soul blueprint. And to me, the unique soul blueprint can be translated in different tools. Like if you're familiar with human design, that gives a, a very beautiful illustration and indication of how our energy types are so differently and how we're going to process things so differently. So for example, from in my human design, I am a sacral generator. So if I'm following my design, waiting at waiting to respond, waiting for things to show up. Now, if we're going back to like the law of attraction, conscious creation, I do still feel like there's a beautiful component with this. So there for me, the healing journey and the way I work with my clients is three parts. And one is conscious creation. So it's stepping into the identity structures and choosing what it is that you the end result of what it is you want to to see, feel, taste, touch from a place of expansiveness, from a place of alignment. And so when we put ourselves in this state, we can close our eyes. And, you know, for example, if it's a, uh, a loving soulmate relationship or health and vitality or whatever it is, you can put yourself in that state and you can just choose it. And why, what I mean by this is we are in this quantum reality where I don't believe time exists as we're told. So to, we hear of time as very linear. And now that to me is like this human construct we've created as a way to measure time. However, everything already is, everything on the planet, like if you are, you know, a, a choosing the soulmate love, your soulmate's already here on this planet. So it's, and then even that version of you that is in this health and vitality um, in this healthy body is already available in this quantum reality. So you can step into that and you can feel it at a cellular level. And so the mind and the body don't know the difference when we put ourselves into the state of creation and choice versus what's happening in the physical reality. So that plants what I call energetic seeds so that we can really start to cultivate this frequency because if everything is energy, we can't fake frequency. We can say all the things we want with our words, but people feel frequency and energy at a very deep level. We can, we, I mean, we all know this fundamentally. Yes. <laughs> so, um, and then the other two parts is, is present. So being here in the now for what is showing up in the now, because oftentimes with, I feel with some of the teachings of the law of attraction, it's like we're chasing something. So 
we're, we're, we're almost saying giving these instructions that the now isn't good enough and that it'll be better when. And for me, I found every time I chase, it's like I'm pushing up against something. But if I can bring my energy back into the present moment, what is showing up right now? And that mm-hmm. might be some emotion to process. That might be to go to the gym. That might be to eat a meal or drink some water, like whatever it is. But what is, when we present ourselves, what is showing up in the now? And then the third component is that, you know, that healing work. But if we're being present, then the two kind of go together. Yes. You know, it's really interesting, you know, you talking about that, like faking your frequency, um, because, you know, when I started the podcast and, and started thinking, well, how am I going to build this? I actually hired a, um, a business coach because I don't know anything about business. Um, but I, I spoke to her. She's, you know, she was wonderful and she was very expensive and she had all these great ideas. And I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea. I couldn't execute, even though I want, I said that I wanted, you know, these things, these end results, I couldn't execute because I had what I didn't realize at the time was a fear of money. I had in Mm. like, I had a fear of asking for money. I had a fear like that I was not worthy of asking for money. Like I wasn't creating something that was worthy enough. And, um, you know, I spent all this money and I didn't, I wasn't ready. I wasn't internally ready. Um, so now I happen to meet this person who um, is just offering to be a mentor. And he actually noticed, he's like, you know, when we talk about money, you have this really, you're very uneasy. You're, you look very uncomfortable right now. And I'm like, yeah, I am really uncomfortable about talking about money. And then, you know, he got into it. Okay, where's this fear stemming from? And I really dove into it. And then I just opened up a can of worms of why, why I re- I was scared of money and I had all this fear and felt unworthy. And I started working on that. And then that became, then all the things that the woman I was working with prior, a couple of years ago, it was like, I could execute all of these things that she told me. I couldn't do it then because I just wasn't emotionally ready. I was, even though I said I wanted certain things, I wasn't ready to do the steps to get there. Um, So I can feel the difference in how I'm ready to do it now as opposed to, okay, this is what you're telling me I should do. I'm going to try to do it. But it just, it wasn't, I wasn't manifesting it because I just didn't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love this conversation because I feel like a lot of women that are maybe struggling in their business or in general, because I will be completely honest, I had the same thing. And I have been peeling back those layers as well. And for me, it was this, it was a lot of programming, but part <laughs> of it was around this receiving that if I receive money, if I receive, then I owe them, I owe someone something. Mm -hmm. And it almost like the energetic exchange, like of receiving and owing someone, or at least my program of owing someone something, it was like, I was like, I don't want it. (laughs) Unconsciously, I was like, I don't want it. And so there's always these deeper, um, you know, levels to this. And again, just as the feminine and as in being in this feminine energy, like it's all about receiving. And when we're in a space to where we feel uncomfortable receiving or where there's, for me, there was like guilt and shame around receiving and I'm still working through it because this Mm -hmm. stuff can go really deep. This stuff can go, you know, generation to generation. And even, you know, if people resonate with past lives, like there's, to me, it's all happening in the now anyway, if it's coming up, but it's just a very, it's very interesting on how this stuff um, shows up. But one thing I found is it's like, as I connect more into the truth of who I am, and as I'm just more okay with being in that unapologetically and not having to be perfect, I think too, I don't know if you've had this, but it's like, I've had at times where I just want it to be perfect. So I don't take action. Yes. <laughs> because I just, <laughs> yes. I, I feel like there, you know, there is so much um, out there in the coaching world and just in general of this energy of having to show up in this perfect way, but that like, what is perfect even, right? You know, we get into comparison and then we we get kind of stuck 
in this comparison and we're, we're, we're the only version of ourselves and when we can just go be that unique version of ourselves and shine our light and be in our authenticity and our truth, that is what sends the ripple effects out and creates change and this expansiveness within and then without. Yes, absolutely. I, I love that. Um, and it's it, it's funny because it's like you think you've healed certain things, but I feel like if you are having a hard time, like honestly, I didn't ha- know I had a hard time. Like I knew I had a hard time with asking for money, but I thought it was just like, oh, everyone has a hard time. But it was just investigating like what was deeper in there. And then it was just like, wow. There's way more that I, I need to work on than just, you know, the abuse or just the abandonment issues. It's, you know, it was a whole mess of things. Like you said, it's everything's just layered and layered and layered. Um, so, I, I mean, I think this is great, great work. I, how can, like, someone begin to understand their own tuition and, and step into their life's purpose and work? Yeah, it's interesting. If you would have asked me this question a month ago, I probably would have given a different answer. But I feel that it is so unique to each person because I would have said, step into your body and, you know, really feel into your body and use your body as a tool. But I don't actually believe that that is true for everyone. That is true for me. But I think that the way that we all use our intuition and that higher knowing and that higher guidance is so unique to us. So I would say my first recommendation and, and um, suggestion would be to get get clear on that. So there are a bunch of different tools you can use. I mentioned human design. That's a beautiful way to really tune into some um, guidance on how you process energy and how your energy blueprint helps you kind of navigate that and um you know, for some of us, it's like that gut response. And for some people, there's actually an energy type that is benefits from waiting a whole lunar cycle. It's a very rare energy type. And then there's energy types where it's like just kind of that, like, um, it's called like the splenic. Um, so like that, just, you know, the quiet whispers and that intuition. So some people hear things and some people feel things deeply in their body. Some people see things more viscerally. Maybe you have more of a connection to your third eye. So what I will say as well is that at the end of the day, you always know. You always know what's best for you. You always know. It's just simply a disconnection when we say we don't know. It's just we've forgot or we've disconnected as a way of keeping ourselves safe or it, it, it's all perfect and where your awareness is at this point and the decisions that you're making at this point are also perfect because I truly believe that we do choose our highest where we're at and then we may take you know a couple steps forward and be like okay I can see why I did that but now I'm going to choose this and so a couple different things too that really helped me was learning how to muscle test. So that's an easy one that people can, you know, go on YouTube or something and and learn how to use their body. So a strong response, you can even stand up. And if you say, you know, my name is Bob, and your name's not Bob, you're gonna your body's gonna slightly rock backwards a bit. If you say my mom, or my name is Amanda, and I I say that because my name's Amanda. Mm-hmm. I'm going to rock forward. The body is just going to rock forward. And so that's kind of something that you can play around with as well. But I do feel it's different for everybody. And so I feel it's getting in touch with getting back in touch with yourself. And maybe that's to, to even kind of get the clarity on this is first and foremost, just choosing and asking for it. Because when we choose something, when we ask for something, I do feel that the universe orchestrates itself to make it happen. And it may not show up in the way that we think it's supposed to show up, but Mm -hmm. that's also kind of the beauty of this process. And so we can really ask for that support and that guidance. Um, You can go into meditation. If you're new to meditation, you can start with just a couple minutes of tuning in, maybe bringing some conscious awareness to your breath. Because one of the first things that I would say, if you are wanting to tune into your guidance system and your intuition at a deeper level, is that I do feel that that requires a pause and in, in, in more of that feminine receiving energy. 
And when we're in this hustle, consumerism, and just like productivity energy, this more kind of like do, 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 mm-hmm. that is, it's, it's definitely going to be a bit more challenging to receive this guidance than when we're in these um, receiving spaces. So I would suggest kind of feeling into that and how that feels for, for you and your body if you are wanting to get kind of this deeper level of guidance. Now you could, you could journal, like you could go in nature. There are just so many different things, but again, I just feel that it's so, um, it's just so unique to each individual. And then also another layer is just when things are coming up to the surface is just allowing, allowing that to come up to the surface. Because if you do, you know, say, I I really want to connect with my intuition. I choose to connect with these parts of me. That might mean that there's going to be some dismantling that takes place and some releasing that takes place of the things that aren't you so that you can have access and really connect with those places that are you. Wow. We, we, you talk about leveling up. Is this, you know, leveling up to the high soul aligned version of yourself? Um, is that, is that in, in tapping into your intuition, is that similar or is that, is that something completely separate? So I feel that even like my language has changed in the last couple of months because it's like, for some people, it may feel like leveling up. We hear ascension all the time. For some people, it's like that deep going within, right? So we connect with ourselves by going within ourselves. So I feel guided to say that it's at the end of the day, like this journey is just a journey back home to self and whatever way that looks. And so, you know, as we ascend, I do feel like we can, you know, you may resonate with the language like leveling up because it's like you're releasing the density. And so we're stepping more into that light body, as I call it. And Mm. I truly believe that the light body is like the divine template of what the human being is, was the, all the isness like prior to the, because I think, think there's a certain level of density that's required to come into this 3d physical plane. However, I do feel that it's not by divine design that we have all this dis-ease and this heaviness and this sickness and all this stuff that's going on. And so when we talk about releasing the density, we're really allowing the cells and the DNA to shift back into this light body. And what I mean by that is, again, it's like this fullest expression of you. So your higher self is just a part of you. And so whether you connect with that by connecting up or connecting within, whatever way you feel connected is simply is simply perfect. And so again, there's no right or wrong way I don't feel to do this healing journey or to, there's just not one size fits all. And Mm -hmm. I've learned that (laughs) kind of through some trial and error where I even have put different healers and coaches on pedestals. And it's like really so what I found is so important is to to step back into our truth and into our power. And then when we can work with different mentors or maybe there's different books or things that can help us, that's all beautiful. But at the end of the day, when we're looking for these things outside of ourselves, it, it, it kind of even ties into this energetic of consumerism. Like we are consuming to fill these spaces within ourselves that may feel like what we would call a void or, um, you know, we have like some painful, unintegrated, unhealed peace or trauma, because really, I feel that trauma and all these things are just unprocessed energy, they're unprocessed events. And so when we have a, a painful event, we can say a traumatic event, because I feel that, you know, there's all kinds of different things that can can occur. And, you know, some people would say that's not traumatic, but maybe it was traumatic for the person experiencing it. And mm-hmm. so it can be, you know, there it can be all kinds of different things. So when we have this unprocessed energy in our energy body and in our energy field until 
we allow it to just come out because energies just want to move through us and the emotions and just want to move through us. And so when we have these emotions in the past, for me, I could say I would just stuff them. And then Mm -hmm. where do we think that energy is going? Right. And so that's what, when we kind of speak to maybe what we'd call a dark night of the soul, or, you know, we have these painful, you know, awakenings, because I do feel these awakenings can be very, very beautiful and gentle. But I also feel that, I mean, for me, mine was not gentle. (laughs) The my healing process has not been gentle. So it's just the releasing of all this unprocessed stuff, which allows us to really let that highest you, the higher you come through at a deeper level. And so we can, yeah, we can call that ascension. We can call it leveling up. We can call it going within. We can call it knowing ourselves more fully. We can call it, you know, anything really that resonates, but it's just really, I feel just releasing the lies, the distortions, the density so that you can Mm -hmm really just be in alignment with who you truly are and let that come through. You know, that reminds me, I I just did a podcast the other day um, called the Psilocybin Says Podcast. Um, So I have worked with psilocybin to kind of heal my my trauma, um, magic mushrooms. Um, Oh, fun. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I haven't tried those yet, but I, I, there's a part of me that wants to. <laughs> I mean, I highly recommend it. I, I, I work with an integrative um, um, therapist, uh, trauma therapist, and we really got got in there. But when I, I got on this podcast, and they said, "Well, what does psilocybin say to you?" And I was like, it really just tells me to be. It tells yeah. me to be who I am authentically, not who what society kind of told me I need to be, not what my friends or family expected me to be, but just to kind of just be. And 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 it's like, oh well, how does that happen? It's like peeling the onion. But I feel like this this the mushrooms actually showed me how. Like it was basically just telling me like I needed to work on it literally showed me the traumas I needed to work on it it showed me the fears I needed to work on which in integration work post mushrooms the money came up and it was like it was like a light bulb went off so I believe that you know, and I think that's what the mushrooms do is that they, they kind of peel back the onion and all of the layers of heaviness. And, you know, I, I've talked to people, several people who, you know, had terminal cancer, who did, you know, the magic mushrooms through a study through Johns Hopkins. And, you know, they're in remission, you know, they went from terminal to be um, being in remission. And I think it's because they were able to heal what was happening you know, before the cancer. Um, so I think it's, it, it was, it's definitely a, an amazing modality that, that I absolutely, um, I'm all about. Um, but I think in general, I mean, obviously you can get to that state of mind and Buddhist monks, they meditate all day to get to that, 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 you know, their highest self. Um, I feel like the psilocybin kind of does, does the same thing. Um, and and I it really that. does tell you all this. <laughs> so I love that. Yeah. Well, I think that it's so great because I I feel that sometimes even I have made healing more complicated than it really is. And it was I was doing the best that I could, but I feel like sometimes we make healing, you know, it's like it's like the ego and the unconscious. It's almost like that piece of letting go and just being, like you mentioned. Like there's such beauty in just being in the moment and really just asking ourselves, like asking our soul, like what is my highest today? What is my 10 out of 10 today? And for me yesterday, that was actually sleeping because over the weekend I was going through it. Like I, I am no, (laughs) I am all about being completely like raw and open about this stuff. I, I had another just really heavy triggering. It felt like death for the last two weeks. And Um, I, yesterday I was just, I, there was this part of me that felt like I needed to be producing something and doing something and working, but my body was like, we need to sleep and relax and not have you guilt and shame us for it. And I was Mm -hmm. like, okay. And so it was a very interesting experience because I've had these things before, but I consciously 
was aware of it yesterday and I feel so much better today, but it's just can be so simple. Like as us just tuning into what is it that we need in this moment? What is our soul asking for? And what is our body asking for? And what is our highest 10 out of 10? Like I always like to ask the question, if we pulled money out of the equation for a moment, like what would we be doing today? If there was zero obligation and we just did what our highest was, like, I just, I'm so passionate about this question. I know it might be triggering to some, but it, because our society is so deeply rooted in going to work and Mm -hmm. buying the home and getting, you know, the partner and all the shoulds and all the things, but it's like, well, maybe for someone that's not their highest. So I always love that question, just pausing. And it's like, what, what is my highest today? Like, what is my highest in this moment? What is, what do I want to do? Like, what does my soul want to do? What feels expansive? Yeah. Well, as an energy healer, do you feel that if someone, if someone were to reach their highest self, listen to their intuition, take all the money out of the equation and, and not just do, 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 would they automatically reach their highest selves and and I guess if that that were the case then the money wouldn't be an issue or would their would their vibrations attract the money that they need or want or manifest I love this question because I actually there's a gal that I work with that she is helpful for me when I'm going through these things and I asked her pretty much the same question and she's like that's not for me to tell you that's for you to 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 experience because I actually think that's part of what the actually we're here to figure out. Right. (laughs) And so Mm -hmm. I just, I, I, for one, I'm still figuring that out. Right. I'm navigating my process and, and I've even shifted in the way that I approach things. I look at myself as more of a healing facilitator and yes, with permission, I'm tuning into things, I'm getting information, but it's a co-creative process because we all have an inner healer inside of us. We all have an, our own soul medicine. And so when we're, because I've done the thing where I've given my power away to healers and then they tell me all this stuff that never ends up happening or even you know getting psychic readings or whatever. And they're telling me who my person is or whatever. And it never ends up being the truth. It's because they, they don't, they don't get to have that information. I don't feel maybe, maybe um, years ago, but where we're at in the evolution of consciousness, I don't believe that that's a thing anymore because of the way that, and, and it's almost like something so visceral and I can't even fully put words to it, but the way that, that it is that where we're at right now, like the frequency and the vibration of the planet it's like we're really co-creating with our highest, with our, we're a unique expression of God. I truly feel we are this unique embodiment of God. And so when we're looking outside of ourselves for these things, we're, in my experience, I've just been spinning my wheels. <laughs> I've learned some beautiful <laughs> lessons, but I, it always comes back to the same thing, which is just coming back to self. And so mm-hmm. I, I can't really answer that question because I feel that that's just a unique question that we all get to ask ourselves. What is that for us? What is the deeper meaning of why we're here? And that's not, it's just so unique to each of us. And that's the beautiful part of getting to take some action and pivot. And, you know, maybe it can be a little messy for me. It's been really messy. So i you know, I left and sold my home. Like I got, I let go of all the things that I thought I was that just weren't true. It was never was me. And so as I continue to change and evolve, that's the thing we're evolving daily. We're evolving moment by moment. And so one, the things that I say today, I may look at a year from now and be like, Oh, okay. I see where you were at that point, but I don't even, you know, may not even really resonate with that. And so that's just the beauty of this journey And I feel what's happening is that there's some acceleration going on because so many people are waking up. And so this collective field, if you will, of people saying, we don't really want to do this the old way we've been told to do it. We're over that. We're shifting Mm -hmm. into this more soul aligned new earth and we're writing the script. And that's also why it can feel very uncomfortable is because we don't have a a script on what we're supposed to be doing. We're actually writing it from the 
our highest and we're co-creating this new reality that we want to live in here. And so if that answers your question without answering your question. No, I, I <laughs> thank you. I, I, I do agree. And I think that there a lot of it is, you know, people are still listening to the noise, the external noise of what you should be doing which makes them scared to do what they want to be doing. Um, and, and I think, you know, bottom line, I think just kind of searching your soul yourself to what you should, what you want, I feel. And, and, in this is, and maybe this is just for me. It's just, I feel like if, and I didn't think this before I went, went into recovery um, for, you know, trauma but I feel what I'm learning now is I'm I'm understanding like I need to do what I what my what my soul is telling me what I what I need to do now instead of what oh I feel bad because I need to be doing laundry right now or I need like the the thing is the laundry will get done I think I just need I need a rest or yeah. I have this that I've been wanting to do I'm just gonna do it and just that change has made so much of a difference. Um, in myself and, and, and how I look at things. Um, I wanted to ask you one final question. It's probably loaded though. Um, can mm. you discuss inspired action and flow and, you know, your, your work with rapid recodes? Cause I don't feel like a lot of people know, know about that, that, um, those topics there. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So the modality that I've used is actually like a combination of everything I've learned. And so that's one thing I love too, is I always tell people like take grit resonates, leave the rest. And even if you're learning modality or certification, like I'm such a big advocate of making things your own because when we try to push ourselves into a box, it's like we're trying to like be someone or something else. And not to say we can't master certain things, but I always just say take what resonates. But anyway, so yeah, so my modality, I call them essence activations and recodes. and so it really ties into what I explained earlier of stepping into conscious creation. And that could just mean stepping into like the true essence of your soul and simply through intention. Intention is so powerful. So stepping into that, all the isness of you or stepping into the frequency of love that you want to experience, whatever it is. And again, coming from that place of heart and soul alignment and because it feels so expansive. And so we, again, when we step into these energies, we're cultivating it. We're planting those energetic seeds. That is what we're, we're creating it. And then we can identify what is causing resistance. So, and this ties into an inspired action because what is causing resistance could be, again, things that we label the ancestral programming, the identities that, that say, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. My light is too bright. Knit, fill in the blank. And the emotions, the belief. So what is showing up that is causing the resistance to it being here now? Like what, what is causing any type of discord or, you know, it's different for everybody, obviously, but what is showing up? And then we have the component of this inspired action piece. And I feel that that is also different for everybody because that is, again, tied into tuning into your soul, your intuition on what the next steps are. And that might be to do nothing. That might be to just set it, choose it, and it's going to you know show up. I'm, now, when I say inspired action, that might be like, let's say your, your choice is I choose the end result of soulmate love and calling in this beautiful partnership and you have like, you know, and I always say this is something more expansive because sometimes the things that we think we want are the universe has like a million times more expansive in store for us. So that's always kind of beautiful. But when we um, step into this and choose it and then let's say, for example, you get like a ping to go to a coffee shop. And then the mind takes over and you're like, Oh, well, I got like, all this stuff to do, I got to do dishes and laundry or whatever. And it's like, well, 
maybe that ping was for a reason. So it's following those soul nudges and learning the language that your soul speaks to you. And this ties into what we were discussing earlier, because in the past, I would have said, well, you know, it was just kind of this one size fits all. This is how it is. But I don't feel that way. I feel that it is so important to get in touch with the language that your soul uses to speak with you. And, and I gave some already gave some ways on how you can do that. But that is so tied into this process. Because for, you know, for some of us, again, like speaking from my, if we're talking like my human design, it's, weight like generator energy like we are generators make up about 70 i think it's 70 75 percent of the population so manifesting generators and generators and so basically we're like meant to really just light the world up with our energy and our strategy is responding so when like stuff shows up it's that gut reaction yes or no and it's typically going to be immediate. And this is for, for those of us who have the sacral um, authority. And if if I'm speaking a foreign language, you can always go pull your human design chart. And there's tons of podcasts and stuff if this is like pinging in your system to um, maybe dive in a little deeper. But and then for other people, again, it's it's maybe they need to wait and process how they're feeling. And and not necessarily respond right away. Maybe they're um, the manifester type is going to be more of that, like take action energy. So again, it's so unique to each one of us. But foundationally speaking, if we're talking about like inspired action, I would say if I want to just like put it into a very specific, um, very short sentence, it's does this feel expansive to my soul? And that's foundationally how we can kind of like unmuck all of the all of the things uh, if you you know if, you, if you're just getting getting into this process but does this feel expansive to my soul and is it a 10 out of 10 is this my highest and that is a good way to kind of figure out and and move through this and typically it's like it's almost like you don't even have to think twice it's you just feel like this call to do this thing and there may be a little bit of fear involved. So I say there's a difference between there being like some fear of the unknown versus something not being in alignment. So there's a difference. Like, for example, before I started my podcast, this was years ago, I was terrified of public speaking. Like there's no way I would have ever been doing a talk <laughs> like this. I was the kid that would drop a class in college if we had to do a public speaking, if we had to do an oral presentation. And I've got some stories behind that. I won't go into that now, but it's, it's this. So it's, I'm using this to illustrate the difference of taking this inspired action from a place. Okay. I'm a little afraid. Or if it's something that is just a hard, no, it's not my highest. And then we can work with the resistance, like this process, I was able to release all these fears and things of being able to speak my truth and being able to be seen and give, you know, different talks and um, have a podcast and all these things. So if you, you know, you are struggling with anything like that, there definitely are ways that you can release it because if it is this low vibrational dense energy, it's not you and never was. So if that gives you any <laughs> light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> no, that is helpful. I've, and, you know, honestly, I wish I knew this before when I hired my first coach um, because I was like, yes, I want to do that. But uh, I don't know how I feel about doing the steps to get there. And, you know, lo and behold, a year and a half later, I'm like uncovering the muck that I that that was holding me back from actually moving forward with the things that I wanted to move forward with. So, yes, this is this is amazing. And and thank you so much, Amanda, for joining me. And I know that we have had a couple people join us and I hope you guys um, check out the replay and you can also check it, check out this podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, anywhere you get your podcast really on Stitcher. So um, Amanda, thank you so much for joining me today. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure to be here with you today. All right. Well, that was 
Amanda Monnier, energy healer and mindset coach. For more on Amanda, visit my website at tstpodcast.com. That's the letter A, tstpodcast.com. You can also click on that fortune cookie right there. You can click directly on that and go straight to Amanda's website where you can find all of her information. Um, May's issue of Authentic Insider comes out next week. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my email list to get Authentic Insider magazine in your inbox monthly. You can go ahead and join me next week on Fireside Chat when I speak with life coach and author Andrea Mack. She will be sharing her experience as a recovering drug addict and sexual abuse survivor. You've been listening to a Trauma Survivor Thrivers podcast on Fireside Chat. I'm Lori Lee Binstock. Thank you so much for being a part of the conversation. Take care.